consists of the tendons, sarcolemmal ends of the muscle fibers attached with tendons, and also the hinge, hinge cross bridges, or you say arms of the cross bridges. Right? So the elastic component consists of the tendons, sarcolemmal ends of the muscle fibers attached with the tendons and also the arms of the cross bridges. Arms of the cross bridges. Right? So in the skeletal muscle, two components I mentioned, the contractile component consisting of the actin and myosin filament and the elastic component consisting of the uh, tendons, sarcolemmal ends of the muscle fibers attached with the tendons and then the arms of the cross bridges. Uh, during muscle contraction, contractile component undergoes shortening. It undergoes shortening. While the elastic components undergoes stretching. So keep in mind, the contractile component, your muscle contraction undergoes shortening. While the elastic component, the muscle contraction, it undergoes stretching. Stretch. Right? Actually, the skeletal must, must shorten 3 to 5 percent extra to neutralize the stretching of the elastic component. The contractile component in muscle contraction must shorten 3 to 5 percent extra to neutralize the stretching of the, the stretching of the elastic component. Keep in mind that the elastic components are in series with the contractile component. The elastic components are in series with the contractile component. You see, this is the sarcomere. The contractile component. And at the end is the elastic component consisting of the tendons, sarcolemmal ends of the muscle fibers attached with the tendons and also the arms of the cross bridges. So at the end, there are the elastic component. So keep in mind, during muscle contraction, the contractile component undergoes shortening while the elastic component undergoes stretching during the muscle contraction. And in order to decrease the muscle length, the contractile component must shorten 3 to 5 percent extra to neutralize the uh, stretching of the elastic component. Now we come to the types of muscle contraction. Types of muscle contraction. So two types of muscle contraction, isometric and isotonic 
muscle contraction. So two types of the muscle contraction, isometric and isotonic muscle contraction. So first about the isometric muscle contraction. In isometric muscle contraction, there is no appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle. There is no appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle during muscle contraction. Some shortening occurs. Some shortening occurs. But that is neutralized by stretching of the elastic component. Some shortening occurs, not much. So some shortening of the muscle occurs, but that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. So there is no appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle during contraction. There is some shortening that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. So as a whole, the length of the muscle does not decrease during muscle contraction. So it is isometric. Length of the muscle remains same, but muscle tension increases. Muscle tension increases, but muscle tension increases. some shortening of the contractile component, but that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component, and muscle length remains the same. Muscle length remains the same. During isometric contraction, the muscle contracts against a constant load. The muscle contracts against a constant load. Both ends of the muscles are held fixed. Both ends of the muscles are held fixed. So during isometric contraction, muscle contracts against constant load and there is No change in the length of the muscle. Why no change? There is some shortening. There is some shortening that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. Both ends of the muscles are held fixed. Now you appreciate this is isometric contraction. Muscle is attached at this end and attached to at the other end, attached at the other end to a heavy weight, heavy load of heavy weight. So muscle contracts but can't, can't lift the load. You keep in mind. The muscle contracts can't lift the load. So there won't be much shortening of the muscle. Some shortening of the muscle occurs that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. So muscle length does not decrease. Muscle length does not decrease because there is some shortening. That shortening is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. So no decrease in the muscle length. But muscle tension increases. Muscle tension increases. Muscle tension will increase. This is uh, isometric muscle contraction in which there is no 
uh, uh, appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle. But muscle tension increases. Both ends of the muscle are held fixed. Muscle contracts against constant load. So the bodybuilder shows its muscle. This is isometric muscle contraction. Both ends of the muscles are held fixed. Both ends are held fixed. You see, muscle become tense. Muscle tension increases, but there is no appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle. In isometric contraction, as load is not lifted, load is not moved, so no external work is done. So no external work is done in isometric contraction. No external work is done in isometric contraction. Whereas no external work is done, much less ATP is utilized much less ATP utilized in isometric muscle contraction. So this was about the isometric muscle contraction. The other type of muscle contraction is isotonic, isotonic muscle contraction. Muscle length decreases during muscle contraction. Muscle length decreases during muscle contraction. There is too much shorting of the muscle. Too much shorting of the muscle, which can't be neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component. So too much shortening of the muscle, which can't be utilized by the stretching of the elastic component. So muscle length decreases. Muscle length decreases. Muscle length decreases. You see? Muscle is attached with a load of 20 kg, which the muscle can lift. Here the load attached is 30 kg, which is which can't be lifted by the muscle. Now here a load of 20 kg, which can be lifted by the muscle. So in this uh, isotonic muscle contraction, one end of the muscle is held fixed, other is free. You see? The muscle lifts the load of 20 kg. Muscle length decreases. Muscle length decreases. Muscle length decreases as the load is moved. External work is done by the muscle. Load is moved, load is lifted, so external work is done by the muscle. Much more ATP is utilized by the muscle. Much more ATP is utilized by the muscle. So external work is done by the muscle, much more ATP is utilized by the muscle. One end of the muscle is held fixed, other is free. So load can be lifted, load can be uh, moved by the muscle contraction. Now muscle tension remains the same. It is isotonic muscle contraction. Muscle tension remains the same. You see? As compared to this, muscle tension, it remains the same. Say 20 kg. And this is uh, in more than that. The muscle tension remains the same in isotonic muscle contraction. You see here, this is isometric contraction. No appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle. There is some shortening of the 
called tactile component sarcomere but that is neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component at the ends of the muscle so you see no appreciable decrease in the length of the muscle and this is the isotonic contraction much shortening of sarcomere you see much shortening of sarcomere much more than which can be neutralized by the stretching of the elastic component although the stretching of the elastic component but muscle length decreases because there is too much shortening of the sarcomere or the contractile component of the muscle so this is the isometric contraction this is the isotonic muscle contraction and in this muscle contraction is isotonic work is done external work is done much more atp is utilized so these are the types of muscle contraction over body movements are mostly mixtures of mixtures of the two types of contraction or body movements are generally mixture of the two types of muscle contraction i am standing muscles of the legs contract isometrically to maintain the erect posture and standing muscles of the legs contract isometrically to maintain the standing posture erect posture. i walk so walking is a mixture of both types of contraction isometric isotonic so in walking when leg is lifted up it's isotonic contraction when leg strikes the ground it is isometric muscle contraction so in walking when leg is lifted up in isotonic muscle contraction when the leg strikes the ground it is isometric muscle contraction similarly in running there is mixture of the muscle contraction in running when legs are lifted up isotonic contraction when the leg strikes the ground strikes the ground it is isometric muscle contraction so this we have seen that walking and uh, running are the mixture of the two types of contraction isotonic when leg is lifted up from the ground and isometric when the leg strikes the ground similarly in weight lifting in weight lifting when weight is lifted from the ground it is isotonic when weight is kept here kept here it is isotonic isometric but when weight is lifted up it is isotonic when weight is kept here it is isometric right so in weight lifting when weight is lifted from the ground it is isotonic contraction weight is kept here isometric weight is moved isotonic weight is kept here again it is isometric muscle contraction in body builders in body builders when the muscles of the body are shown like this in body builders it is predominantly the isometric muscle contraction the body muscle become stiff because of the increased muscle tension as there is no shortening so this is isometric muscle contraction so in body building when there is performance of body building it is mainly the isometric muscle contraction so this was about the types of muscle contraction the isometric and then the isotonic muscle contraction now about the types of muscle 
or types of muscle fiber. So there are two types of muscle fibers, slow or red, and second type is fast or white. Fast or white. First of all, the slow or red muscle, also called type 1 muscle. Type 1 muscle or uh, slow or red muscle. These muscles are involved in slow and prolonged postural maintaining muscle contraction. So muscles are involved in slow, prolonged, and postural maintaining muscle contraction. Say muscles of the back, muscles of the back, muscles of the legs to maintain the erect posture. Say soleus, gastrocnemius muscle. So these are the slow muscles of the red muscle. So these muscles have extensive capillaries. Have got extensive capillaries. And blood in these capillaries contain red blood cells. Blood in these capillaries contain red blood cells. In these muscles, there are a large number of mitochondria. So a large number of mitochondria are present. It means there is very high oxidative or aerobic metabolism in these muscles. So very high oxidative or aerobic metabolism in these muscles. These also must contain large quantity of myoglobin and lipids. So large quantity of myoglobins and lipids are present in these muscles. So because of uh, increased number of red blood cells and myoglobin, these muscles are red. So these muscles are red. Why red? Because of the large number of red blood cells in the capillaries and the large quantity of myoglobin. So these will give red color to the muscle. There is slow ATPase activity in these muscles. Slow ATPase activity in these muscles. And there is also less glycolytic activity. Less glycolytic activity in these muscles. So because of the more blood flow, because of the more blood flow in the muscle, and because of the increased quantity of myoglobin, these muscles, these slow muscles, are resistant to muscle fatigue. These are resistant to muscle fatigue. Resistant to muscle fatigue. So this was about the slow muscles or the red muscles. The second type muscle is uh, the fast muscle or white muscle. Fast or white muscle. These contain less capillaries. These contain less capillaries, less myoglobin, less mitochondria. So these contain less number of capillaries less quantity of myoglobin and less number of mitochondria. So these are white muscles because of the less capillaries, less myoglobin, these are white muscles. White muscles. And less number of mitochondria. So less oxidative or aerobic activity less oxidative or aerobic activity because of the less number of mitochondria. 
high glycolytic activity. High glycolytic activity. And also uh, fast ATPase activity. Fast ATPase activity. In the fast or white muscles, there is extensive sarcoplasmic reticulum. Extensive sarcoplasmic reticulum, which enables rapid release, rapid release, and reuptake of calcium ions. So extensive sarcoplasmic reticulum, which enables rapid release and rapid reuptake of the calcium ions into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. These muscles are fast muscles involved in fast and strong muscle contraction. Involved in fast and strong muscle contractions. Say jumping, jogging. So in jumping, jogging, there are fast and uh, this uh, uh, strong muscle contraction. The muscles of this type are tibialis anterior, tibialis anterior, flexor longus digitorum, flexor longus digitorum, flexor longus digitorum. So this was about the type of muscles, slow or red, fast and white muscle. And next we'll discuss about uh, motor unit. Motor unit. What is a motor unit? A single motor neuron and the muscle fibers it in a way single motor neuron a single motor nerve fiber and the muscle fibers it innervates constitutes a motor unit so motor unit consists of a single motor nerve fiber and the muscle fibers it innervates this is called the motor Unit. You see, this is a single motor neuron, a single motor nerve fiber, and the muscle fibers it innervates. This constitutes a motor unit. Number of muscle fibers in a motor unit are varied. Number of muscle fibers in a motor unit are varied. In muscles involved in fine, precise movement, in muscles involved in fine and precise movements, there are three to six <coughs> muscle fibers in each motor unit. So three to six muscle fibers in each motor unit in muscles concerned with fine, precise movement. Say laryngeal muscles, laryngeal muscles, external ocular muscles, external ocular muscles, and laryngeal muscles. There is fine control. There are fine precise movements. So less number of muscle fibers in each motor unit, and the number is three to six in each motor unit. In muscles such as muscles of the back, gastrocnemius muscle, so gastrocnemius muscle and muscle of the back, there may be 150 muscle fibers in a motor unit. So maybe 150 muscle fibers in a motor unit in the muscles of the back, muscles of the leg, gastrocnemius muscle. So there are up to 150 muscle fibers in motor unit. In these muscles, 
fine control of movement is not required. In this muscle, fine control of movements is not required. So much more number, maybe 150 muscle fibers in each motor unit. There is over overlapping, overlapping of muscle fibers of adjacent motor units. Overlapping of muscle fibers of adjacent motor units. We can say that adjacent motor units contract with the help of each other. Adjacent motor units help contract with the help of each other. So adjacent motor units uh, contract with the help of each other. What is a macro motor unit? Macro motor units are seen in patients of poliomyelitis. So in poliomyelitis patients, we see the macro motor unit. Now in a patient of poliomyelitis, there is damage to some of the motor nerve fibers innervating the muscle. There is damage to some of the motor nerve fibers innervating the muscle. So damage to some of the motor nerve fibers innervating the muscle. So some muscle fibers are paralyzed. Some muscle fibers are paralyzed. Of course, some motor nerve fibers are intact. Some are well, some are damaged, destroyed, resulting into paralysis of some of the motor, some of the muscle fibers. 